Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today's video is on the subject of left ventricular hypertrophy and in particular the question I'm going to try and answer is can left ventricular hypertrophy be reversed? Okay, so the first thing to say is when the heart is working for a prolonged time against an increased pressure it becomes more muscular without any muscle you work it harder it becomes more muscular the heart is a muscle uh, and if it is working continuously for a long time against a higher pressure uh, it becomes more muscular this muscularity is referred to as hypertrophy as the left ventricle is responsible for pumping blood all around our body any pathology within the body that makes it harder for the heart to pump blood out will cause left ventricular hypertrophy it's worth noting that a hypertrophied heart a more muscular heart is in general uh, a much heavier heart the mass is greater in a, a hypertrophied heart has a much higher mass compared to a non hypertrophied heart uh, and left ventricular hypertrophy is important for two main reasons the first is that it is a sign that the heart is under some kind of stress and therefore whenever we see it we need to try and identify the stressor why is the heart having to work harder it's really important that we think about that as doctors and then the second thing is that the left ventricular hypertrophy itself by itself can also cause us harm and I'm going to talk about that in this video as well all right so both of the things, the fact that it could be a sign of something else and the fact they can do us harm by itself uh, mean that the presence of left ventricular hypertrophy is associated with a worse prognosis for the patient. Patients who have left ventricular hypertrophy have a higher incidence of strokes, they have a higher incidence of heart attacks, they have a higher incidence of heart rhythm disturbances including atrial fibrillation, ventricular fibrillation, they have a higher incidence of dilatation of the blood vessels, the aorta, so aortic dilatation. And finally, they also have a much higher incidence of sudden death. It's worth just mentioning a couple of studies from which we have gauged this information. There was a prospective study of 1,033 patients above the age of 50 years who had high blood pressure and no cause was found and they'd never really had a problem with their heart before that. But when you followed them up over three years, those patients who had left ventricular hypertrophy uh, had a significantly higher risk of events over that three year period. And the authors calculated that for every 39 uh, grams per meter squared body surface area increase in mass, there was a 40% increased risk uh, of cardiac events. So when the heart becomes heavier, bad things seem to happen to those people. There was another study which looked at the correlation between left ventricular mass and found that for every 50 grams per meter square increase in body mass in, in cardiac mass there was a significantly higher risk of sudden death over the next 14 years so left ventricular hypertrophy is uh, important um, and really must never be ignored in terms of causes of left ventricular hypertrophy, why do you get left ventricular hypertrophy? Well, the most common cause is high blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure and the blood pressure is left unchecked, the heart is having to work against it and will become more muscular. Similarly, other vascular conditions like diabetes, because in diabetes also you get diabetes is a vascular disease that affects the blood vessels and the heart is having to pump blood into these blood vessels. So if you have long-standing diabetes that's affecting the blood vessels, it's going to be harder for the heart to pump blood into the blood vessels and that will also cause left ventricular hypertrophy. Another really important cause is obesity. Obesity will cause left ventricular hypertrophy uh, because it's more, it's more difficult for the heart to pump blood around. And finally, kidney disease, very important again. If the kidneys are in some way damaged, it becomes more difficult for the heart to pump blood and that will also cause left ventricular hypertrophy. Another condition that is commonly ignored that I like to really try and talk about is sleep apnea. One in five people in the Western world have sleep apnea. 
85% of sleep apnea remains undiagnosed. If you get a patient with left ventricular hypertrophy, high blood pressure, it's always worth thinking of sleep apnea because that could be the cause, that could be the underlying cause. If you tackle the sleep apnea, the left ventricular hypertrophy may get better or certainly won't get any worse. So that's really important. There are other causes of left ventricular hypertrophy, valve disease. If you have a narrowed aortic valve, that could cause left ventricular hypertrophy. There are some metabolic conditions. One of them is called Fabry's disease, where uh, the heart can thicken up. But these are far rarer. The most important things when you see left ventricular hypertrophy and you're trying to think of causes, think of high blood pressure, think of diabetes, think of obesity, think of kidney disease and think of sleep apnea. Important to exclude those. All right. And the next question is, once you've thought about a possible cause, then you have to ask yourself, well, how does this left ventricular hypertrophy cause harm by itself? Um, and there are several mechanisms. The first thing to say is that if you have a more muscular heart, there's a reduced density of capillaries supplying that muscle. And therefore, the muscle may be more susceptible to becoming deprived of blood. If this happens, if that muscle, because you've got so much more muscle, if there's less blood going to the muscle, that can actually damage and scar the heart, damage and scar that muscle. So you have more muscle, but if that muscle isn't really very effective muscle because it's not getting the blood, then that actually causes weakening of the heart with time. And the scarring itself can increase the risk of heart rhythm abnormalities because you're getting scarring and therefore the electricity can't go in in the normal way. In addition, it is also postulated that in people um, who have high blood pressure, the blood vessels, you know, they cannot open up as much because of all this overlying muscle. And so the blood vessels can't open up and that could reduce the amount of blood getting through the heart, particularly when the blood vessels need to open up, like during exercise. So when we're exercising, we need lots of blood. Our blood vessels need to open up. They need to allow blood to get through. But if you have left ventricular hypertrophy, you've got a whole wodge of muscle overlying these capillaries, then the blood vessels may not open up. It's also worth bearing in mind that a more muscular heart is generally a stiffer heart. Uh, that means that whilst the increased muscularity means that the heart can generate a greater force to contract, it also means that the heart needs a lot more time to relax. That's why, you know, when we look at, say, a bodybuilder, a bodybuilder would struggle to be a ballerina because a bodybuilder is, in general, because of all this muscle they're carrying, they're a little bit stiffer compared to, say, someone like a ballerina. Um, and, and so muscularity brings about with it more stiffness. Uh, now, what happens is that, obviously, the heart is really strong. It can pump blood out, because, but if it takes too long to fill with blood, then it's pumping less blood out because there's not much blood for it to pump out so it's pumping less blood out which means that all the organs get less blood this process is termed diastolic dysfunction um, and when our organs and especially our kidneys get less blood they generate hormones which do two things they cause all our blood vessels to tighten because the kidneys think, oh, this person's dehydrated. Let's try and make the body smaller in some way. So the blood vessels tighten and the kidneys also release hormones to increase the amount of absorption of salt and water into our bodies. And this actually paradoxically increases the blood pressure because all the blood vessels are now tighter. So it's making it harder for the heart to pump blood out and they're increasing the amount of blood by, re, re, by absorbing all this salt and water. So you've got more blood and the, that you have to work with, that you have to pump around, but it's harder to pump that blood around. So you're getting a double whammy. And the problem with that is that the left ventricular hypertrophy then will continue to get worse because you've increased the pressure that the heart has to work against and you're making the heart work harder anyway because it's got more to pump around. So over a period of time, uh, the heart starts um, uh, struggling to keep up with this requirement and over a period of time the heart starts filling with all this blood that those kidneys are absorbing um, and the heart starts stretching and over a period of time as the heart continues to stretch it gets weaker and flabbier. And this, when the heart becomes weak and flabby, this is called systolic dysfunction as opposed to diastolic dysfunction or systolic heart failure. 
So, a high, so it's important to understand that a hypertrophied heart is more likely to suffocate, it is more susceptible to heart rhythm disturbances, and it is more likely to fail. And by failing, I mean it's more likely to be unable to keep up with the body's requirements. So, after all this doom and gloom, uh, there is some good news. And the first bit of good news is that left ventricular hypertrophy can be reversed. And perhaps more importantly, the reversal of left ventricular hypertrophy has been shown to improve prognosis in patients. So, you know, there's all to play for here. The next question is, how do we reverse left ventricular hypertrophy? Well, first and foremost, the most important thing is to try and look for a cause for the left ventricular hypertrophy and tackle that cause aggressively. So identify whether the patient has sleep apnea and tackle that. If the patient is overweight, tackle that. If the patient has kidney disease, try and treat that the best you can. Um, you know, control diabetes, control blood pressure. That is really important. The second thing then is lifestyle modification. We mustn't ignore lifestyle because lifestyle is so, so important, far more important than any pills we have available to us. Uh, and in terms of lifestyle measures, restriction of salt intake is very helpful. Uh, healthy nutrition, ideally a plant-based Mediterranean type of diet, regular cardiovascular exercise, uh, good sleep hygiene and stress management all will play a big role in preventing the left ventricular hypertrophy from getting worse, but also potentially helping reverse it. Then when we see left ventricular hypertrophy, we do tend to feel that this is an indication to add in medication uh, because the commonest cause of high blood pressure, a uh, common cause of left ventricular hypertrophy is high blood pressure. You know, yes, lifestyle is good, but lifestyle takes time. And what you want to do is you want to, you've already seen the process happening. So you want to in some way be very aggressive about um, arresting the process or actually even trying to reverse the process and in that setting it's important to have a low threshold for thinking about giving medications to control the blood pressure. One of the most important points that I wanted to get across to you here in this video is that the amount of regression you can hope to see with con by control by taking blood pressure tablets is dependent on which type of medication you use. It is not just simply enough to lower blood pressure. It's important to lower the blood pressure with the medications that have been shown in research to reduce or regress left ventricular hypertrophy. Um, and there have been several studies and they've found that there are differences between blood pressure medications. So two sets of medications can lower the blood pressure by the same amount, but one may regress left ventricular hypertrophy more than the other and as we know that left ventricular hypertrophy itself can be damaging to us it makes sense to take those medications that actually reverse left ventricular hypertrophy rather than just control the blood pressure. In terms of um, which medications work best and which work worst if you look at all the research the most effective medications at um, regressing left ventricular hypertrophy are angiotensin receptor blockers. These are medications like Losartan, Candesartan, Telmisartan, medications that end with the word Sartan, S-A-R-T-A-N. Okay, those are ARBs. Uh, also, ACE inhibitors are good, not as good as the Sartans, but Lisinopril, Perindopril, Captopril, those are ACE inhibitors. And they're also quite good at reducing or regressing left ventricular hypertrophy. Calcium blockers are also reasonably good. However, what is not so good are beta blockers are not as good, diuretics are not as good, and there are medications like minoxidil and hydralazine which are often given, and they don't seem to regress left ventricular hypertrophy at all. Um, there was a study where they looked at the they looked at all these medications and they tried to work out which one regressed hypertrophy the most. ARBs uh, reduced for the same duration of treatment, ARB seemed to reduce it by 13%, calcium blockers by 11%, ACE inhibitors by 10%, beta blockers by 6%. So for the same reductions in blood pressure, you get different magnitudes of regression in left ventricular hypertrophy with different medications. Now, it's great to try and regress it. What is the evidence out there to say that regression helps? Because you may 
you may tackle it and if it doesn't actually prevent anything bad from happening to you then what's the point of tackling it and the good news is that regression has been shown to be associated with significantly improved cardiac performance so if the heart becomes less muscular it starts beating more it's more flexible it cardiac performance gets better there's a reduced likelihood of heart rhythm disturbances such as ectopic beats atrial fibrillation ventricular fibrillation there's better filling of the heart, this diastolic filling improves, and overall cardiac risk falls. So left ventricular hypertrophy therefore represents a way of detecting whether you are at a higher risk from your cardiovascular condition. You know, if someone tells me, oh, I've got high blood pressure, I would always look for left ventricular hypertrophy. Why? For two or three reasons. One, it tells me that their blood pressure is truly high for them. I don't feel that I'm just treating a number. I feel that I'm treating a process um, when I see left ventricular hypertrophy because I know that the left ventricular hypertrophy is telling me that, that there's that ongoing process and I feel a lot more comfortable about subjecting the patient to medications because I know that there's something there that is telling me just not just a number which could mean anything. Uh, so and and the other thing to say is whenever left ventricular hypertrophy is detected it is important to identify and treat the underlying cause as I've mentioned and it is also important to make sure you're taking the medications that have been shown to regress left ventricular hypertrophy and when we are able to regress left ventricular hypertrophy prognosis improves so it's great news and it's something that I think I, I want everyone to feel empowered that they can talk to their doctors about this and they can say does my echocardiogram show any left ventricular hypertrophy? And in that sense, am I on those medications that have been shown to reverse left ventricular hypertrophy and more importantly, improve patient outcomes? So I hope you found this useful. I'm sorry I haven't done a video for a while. We've actually, Bluebell Gupta and me have moved house. So we're in a new place now. It's very nice. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll have a, a, a little studio and then we can do more videos. Uh, but it's just been tough trying to sort of get it all together uh, and one day maybe I could take you all for a little a tour around the house uh, so uh, we'll do that soon thank you so much and uh, you know once again thank you for all that you do for me